Hello there, guys. Welcome back to Eunice Talks Football. Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. Day after, Chelsea find themselves in the semi-final of the FA Cup. We've drawn Manchester City. No surprise. Um, <laughs> I genuinely thought Liverpool would get through and we get Liverpool again. But no, Man United decided to knock Liverpool out, by the way. That was absolutely incredible. What a game that was. 4-3. And um, in the depth of the end of the game, like the very last, well, not the last kick, but almost the last kick, Diallo with the fourth goal right into the bottom corner, posting in unbelievable scenes. But Manchester United get Coventry in the semi-final, which means that I think it's expected. Man United are going to reach the final. And Chelsea have to do it the hard way. Um, I think, look, realistically, Chelsea would have played a big team in the final anyway. So I think, you know what, to try and not start talking about, what is it, seven Wembley finals that we would have lost or something? I'm glad that we're actually kind of, you know, we're kind of glad that we're, we're playing against the bigger team in the semi-final instead. So, um, you know what, let's get on with it. Let's see what happens in that semi-final, but... Before we get into any sort of business in terms of the semi-final, even the next Premier League game, I'm not even going to address the news. The only thing I think we got to address is what went down yesterday, right? It's, it's, all over, it's all over the media. Everyone's talking about it. So you know what? I'm going to give my two cents. And it's on Sterling being booed. Now, I'll be honest. I've never seen the Chelsea fan base this divided. It's, um, it's bonkers. And it's no surprise. And this is what I wanted to try and focus on. I want to try and focus on the bigger picture because I feel like people are forgetting the bigger picture here. You know, I honestly do not believe that Sterling being booed by the Chelsea fans yesterday is only because of Sterling's performance. It's not. There are underlying issues at this club that has built up the frustration to this level, to this point, where now fans are being tipped over the edge when they see a, a, a poor performance by a player like Sterling. That's it. Fans at the ground are, are literally on, on a boiling point. Any sort of trigger, that's it, triggered. Triggered. Because of where we are. Almost two years of just dealing with this. Do you know what I mean? Two years of dealing with Chelsea at this level. And I have to be honest, it's kind of a little relieving, relieving at least a little bit, right? It's something. Get into a Carabao Cup final. Now we're talking FA Cup semi-final. It's Wembley again, like at least do you know what i mean because if that didn't exist then flipping hell we'd be down and out and we'd be in the gutter like literally game over we have to remember we are 11th finished 12th last year we are still 11th and the frustrations that have built up game in game out game in game out over the last two years is only going to reach its boiling point i feel like people are forgetting that People are so focused on, oh no, just Sterling, just Sterling, just Sterling. But I have to also address this Sterling thing. Let's talk about Sterling. People, look, we have to be honest. Is booing Raheem Sterling going to help him? No. But can we not go down the route of, oh no, let's not boo him because his because of feelings... Like, can we not do that? Can we not? Can we not? Because that's not going to help anybody. We criticise that there's no leaders in this team. We criticise that there's no, you know, um, no one taking the responsibility. We, 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 we talk about all of these points. How are you going to get it out of someone if you don't try and apply some sort of pressure? It has to be put. Now, I'll be honest. Booing let's say, a young player in the team. And it's happened. But it didn't get this much focus, did it? Let's be honest. Mudrik's been booed. <laughs> Kukurea's been booed, right? Um, there have been players in this team that have been booed, but no one's really brought it to this sort of attention like Sterling's got. When, let's be honest here, Sterling is meant to be the senior player in this squad. If there's one player that should be able to take it on the chin and move with it, who's meant to be the senior player and one of the leaders, right, so-called, it would be Sterling. But that's not Sterling. And we've known that. 
we, let's be honest, we've known that people that are looking to Sterling as a, as a senior player to, to take the, the, the scruff of the neck, right, and really lead this team, no. I've never expected it. It's very easy to look at Sterling and go, listen, you're, you're meant to be uh, one of the leaders, you're meant to be the senior player, you're meant to be in your prime. Take Thiago Silva out of this team, who's the leader here? Why are people point to Sterling? Yeah, but he's not. <laughs> We've known this, he's not. The problem with Sterling, let's just be real here, he's just not playing good enough. It's as simple as that. He's not good enough. And he's not good enough for someone who's meant to be 28, if he's not turned 29, in his prime, whilst the others are developing. The others have that excuse, which is why, personally, personally, it's, I, can come and, I can come on here and tell you that I think a player is not good enough. I'll give you an example. Mudrik. I've said it on here. That I, I have my opinion that in the long run, I'm still not sure that he's going to make it at the top level in the Premier League. I've said that. Now we've, now we've tried him in a new position, and I do think that he should deserve a chance. Why does he get away with that? Because he's young. Because we don't know the answers. Because we don't have any background on him to be able to know that, nah, 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 uh, we're certain. We've seen it before. He absolutely can be at the top level. We've not seen it. So should he deserve the opportunity when given the opportunity in a new position, something we've not tried before, something we've not seen, and then he starts showing glimpses? Well, yeah, run with it. Run with it. Even as me, I'm still not convinced that he's going to make it. But he deserves an opportunity. He can prove me wrong. Absolutely. Sterling, though, nah. We've seen what he's played like at Liverpool. We've seen what he's played like at City. We're seeing what he's playing like at Chelsea. And if anyone's going to try and come on here and tell me that Sterling was absolutely incredible at City, so we should absolutely give him a buy on this and give him a pass because, nah, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll come good, he'll come good. Nah, nah. There's a reason why City let him go. And there's a reason why my concerns when we signed him which were documented on here and you can go back and watch it when we signed him I did say that I think the worry in this deal is that we're going to get a Sterling who has shown at City that when he comes to the final pass the final shot the final decision he makes the wrong one most times he makes the wrong one and then he does it right once or twice and all of a sudden he gets away with everything now I want to let you know about Drogba you know what? I've got it here, and I think I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, because I've got it here. Let's show you. Did you know Drogba was booed? Did you know that? Drogba came in. It wasn't exactly working out for him. He was booed. Now, I'm not saying booing's okay. If I had an option, and I could turn a switch, and booing was just turned off, I would do it. But is that, is, that real, is that realistic? Is that life? No. So I think we've got to stop trying to chase fantasy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And like I said, there are underlying factors here as to why Chelsea fans are frustrated to this point. It's because over the last two years, we've seen what this club has been turned into and there's still no conviction. No one's convinced. No one's sure of where this club is going. We're living day by day. We're living in the moment. We're hoping for the best every single game. You know, every game comes along, we're like, mm, let's, let's hope. You know, like, like we have done, like now, we're in the semi-final of the FA Cup, and it's like, all right, let's see what happens. But before, 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 semi-final of the FA Cup, yeah, it's fine. <sighs> routine. It's routine. It's routine. That's what Chelsea fans have been used to. But the fact that there haven't been any predetermined circumstances to adopt this model, what do I mean by that? Chelsea haven't been forced to adopt this direction to take this club down, of just going down youth and going down potential and going down talent and going down prospects. And Chelsea weren't forced. Yeah, there was a sale, but these owners came in and they weren't forced. They chose to go down this route. That's what's created this uncertainty. That's what's created all these results over the last 18 months. This is why Chelsea fans are on edge. It's no surprise that when we see stinkers, fans are going to lose it. That's the reality. 
Can I turn it off? Can we all just switch it off? No. Fans are going to pay their money and go to the ground. They're going to react how they react. But especially from who is meant to be a senior player in the squad, I'm sorry, but you are going to have to do something that maybe the young ones are not quite equipped to do yet, and you're going to have to take it on the chin. Like Drogba explained. Here it is. It was difficult for me to understand why I was being booed at first, but as soon as I did, I did everything to change. I was the one performing and I was the one who had to show our fans that I was good. I had to adapt to them. Jose, John, Frank and Petta all told me I had to listen to the fans. And once I adapted to them, they are going to support me and be with me through everything. So I did everything for them to be with me. I did exactly that and look at me now, nearly 20 years on and they are still my family. This is what we lack. This is what fans want. This is what we lack in this squad. This is why I come on here and I just, I flip and go nuts. Like, it's obvious. I'm not saying don't buy talent, don't buy young players, don't buy, but even, we need not just experience for the sake of experience, because you could argue, yeah, Sterling, Sterling's hell of experience. Tons of experience, but it's not that. We need quality, pedigree. Players that have been there, done that, worn the t-shirt, but knows what it takes to compete at the highest level and execute. Not just someone that was there. Sterling, as far as I'm concerned, is someone that was just there. Sterling was always a supporting role at Man City. A supporting role at, at Liverpool. To an extent, there were times when he's very young where he caught eyes and everyone was like, oh, who is this Sterling, right? He was still very young. But then he dipped. Went to City, supporting role. Comes into Chelsea and now we expect him to be a leader? Nah. This is why I screamed that going down this route of just youth and young and potential and talent. and <laughs> We are screaming for, for a, a, a few, just a few players to take this team by the scruff of the neck and show these young players how to be developed, what to develop into, show and lead by example. We ain't got that. So when fans turn to Sterling, who is one of the seniors, to do it and he lets everyone down, of course this is going to be the reaction. I'm not saying I like it or agree with it, but that's the reality. Whether you like it or not, you're going to have to take it on the chin and move with it like Didier did. That's how you're, look, I will tell you this now. That is the one and only way you're going to win the Chelsea fan base. The match going fans, that is the only way. Is when you stop overcomplicating things. For Sterling himself, right? He wants to, I mean, at this point, look, he's, he's, he's 28, 29. He's meant to be in his prime. I can't tell him to go and develop now. This, this is not gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? This is Sterling. This is what I say. He's, I don't think he's good enough. Simple as that. He's not good enough. So for me to try and come on and say, oh, you know what? You should try and simplify your game. You should be a little less selfish. I mean, he took the penalty from Cole Palmer yesterday. We saw that. It's on camera. You can go and see. He took the penalty from Cole Palmer. Like, Cole Palmer threw the ball at him. <laughs> He's like, oh, I go and take it. But as well, Pochettino, apparently, apparently, I'm just saying apparently here. I don't know if this is the case. This is what Nizar Kinsella, and I think there was others that said it, have said there's no designated penalty taker at Chelsea. It's just whoever feels like it. And Cole Palmer's the one that's been scoring, so he takes the pens. But that's not good enough. Palmer should be the des designated penalty taker, regardless whether you like it or you hate it. Deal with it. He's the one that's scoring pens. We keep him on pens. Who is second in line? If he's not here, well, at that point, we can have a debate. But there has to be a realisation. He's meant to be one of the seniors, leading by example. And look... The, the root of going down, oh, no, you know, b b <laughs> the booing is going to hurt his feelings and, you know, all of this madness. I mean, come on, man, do me a favour, do me a favour. He's on, what is he on? He's on 325k a week or something, right? We're asking for leaders and then we want to be soft with them. Nah! Be the example! Now, like I said, realistically, is booing going to help? No. But... When the criticism needs to come in, and it is sometimes at the ground, right? And this isn't a justification, but it's the reality. The only thing that fans know to do at, the ma at, at a game that's going to really be heard when they want to let someone know that they've had a stinker is to boo. Criticise, effing and blinding and this, what and the other. Well, it's happened since day one. We've seen it, Drogba is an example. But now it's about the reaction. It's about how the player takes it on the chin. 
And how is he going to move forward? What is he going to do? That's the most important thing. I would say, with the young players, right? Don't boo. <laughs> don't, right? And with anyone, realistically, don't. But I'm not going to dictate what the fans do when they pay their money to go and watch a game. After two years, this is what we've been watching, and then they're going to boil over. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But this is why I don't even want to focus on Sterling, at the same time, despite saying all of this, I feel like the attention is being directed to someone who isn't the true culprit. Sterling's not the true culprit here. Sterling, again, is a byproduct of the whole problem at the club, which people need to keep focus on. Pochettino is a byproduct of the problem that is at the club that people need to focus on. And that's the direction. People are forgetting the direction. It's crazy. This, look, what I've noticed, we win one game, right? Or we win two games on the bounce, all of a sudden everything's okay. No! No! And that's going to be a, a rude awakening for fans going into next season if they think that's going to solve the issue. Rude awakening. Because when we're still in the mess and we go into next season and things are the same, people are going to be like, oh, why? Well, because the, the, the problem wasn't addressed at the time when it needed to be addressed. Why are fans looking to Sterling as a leader when we know he's not one? Because we ain't got any. How about we address that? How about we look to recruitment? How about we look to these directors? How about we look to the owners? How about the strategy? How about the model? How about we go and get some flipping leaders? That way, the young players that are talented in this team can develop. How about we do that? That way, we have some balance. Till that is addressed, this won't change. Can I just say that? Till that problem is addressed, this won't change. Or, route two, we go down this route of waiting for these young players to develop and we find out our answer in five years' time. When they reach their prime, we find out our answer then. If it was worth the wait or if it wasn't. But if there's no one to show them, how do you want them to get to the top? Right now, we're accepting just bare minimum and then trying to divert the problem onto the one key catalyst, like now, Sterling, because he put in an absolute stinker yesterday. So all focus on Sterling. You know, Pochettino makes a few mistakes, so I all focus on Pochettino, right? But that's not the true essence of the problem, that's part of the problem. People need to not divert away from that. So what I want to say is, to the players that are currently in the team, if you want to get to the level, right, this is the sort of thing that you have to take on the chin. You need to learn to adapt and deal with it because it's just a reality. Like I said, if I could press a button and switch it all off and it never happens, I would. But that's not real. That's fantasy. <laughs> you don't have control of that. So focus on what you have control of. And what people, what these players and the manager and everyone have control of is the performances that we see week in, week out. You put in performances week in, week out, fans won't have a reason to boo. It's as simple as that. That's your answer that you, that, that you need to focus on. That's it. Same goes to Pochettino about making the correct decisions. The same goes to the strategy of the club and the owners and the directors for actually directing this club in the right direction, which we've not been doing. Simple as that. So that's where the focus needs to be. And that's basically all I want to say. So let me know your thoughts down below. Um, and yeah, we'll see where it all goes from here. Um, but make sure you're here and uh, keeping up with all the latest. I will keep you, give you my thoughts tomorrow on all the news and what's been happening and all of that once we get more of that filters through Chelsea and non-Chelsea. It will be completely um, all football orientated. So make sure you guys are here for that. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And check out the socials on screen and in the description. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you lot then. Take care and peace.